I mark pictures. Way to wear it, tea drinking, caffeine intolerant, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But in this series, the target is out of my control. Three challenges will be put forward on Fox's Facebook page. Then it's up to you to have the final say on what mission I take on. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges so far. Have you been drinking de-icer again? Some of which I've smashed out the park. This one for the win. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. I literally have no words. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This carp freak is not giving up without a fight. Yes. This is the challenge. 18? Is it? 18? I think. I better look on YouTube. 15, hang diddler. 16, left handed left thrapper. Hand. <laughs> 17, cuddle, cuddle cuddle, diddler. Cuddle diddler. And 18. So yeah, okay. If not, just dub it over. Oh my god! What's up car freaks and welcome to the challenge. This is challenge number 18 and the one that you voted for is called Home Sweet Home. I don't really like that title, so I am going to call it The Great Car Race. So that'll give you a clue as to what it's all about. Okay, so you start the challenge at a lake of Harry's choice. For every pound of carp you catch, you get a mile in return. You have 48 hours on the clock. Can Mark make it back home? Well, I'll be going home regardless, <laughs> to be honest. I'm not just going to stay somewhere. But um, yeah, so Harry's chosen Old Mill Lakes uh, in Market Rays in Lincolnshire. Now, it's actually not that far from a home. It's just under 118 miles. So I think he's been quite lenient, really. Also, this is a complex I'm, I'm pretty familiar, familiar with. I'm, I'm here most weeks doing tutorials, um, fished it quite a lot over the past five or six years. Um, also, there are three lakes on site, each with a varying level of stock and difficulty. So really, I'd be quite confident of passing this challenge here. I don't, um, I don't think you should be that confident. Well, you've got Oak Lake just behind me there, really well stocked, lots yeah, of doubles, no, I don't 20s. Think, I don't think you, you're going to be passing it here at all. I really don't. <laughs> Why? Well, so firstly, the challenge says I can pick a lake of my choice, not a venue, a lake for you to start on. So that's going to be Birch. You're going to start on birch. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And um, you're not allowed to fish another lake at this venue. Really? No. No. So you're going to start on birch and then you're going to have to fish at least three venues before you can get home. Well, that's not ideal because literally everything I have with me, I packed with here in mind. So bait, tackle, everything was all for you. Yeah, but it's the challenge. Expect the unexpected. That's not going to be... Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Yeah. That's not going to be as easy as I, I thought. No, of course not. So when does the clock start? I've got 48 hours. Has it started from when I no. arrived? 
I will be lenient in the sense that I'll let you I'll let it start from the moment you cast in your first rod. Okay, well that's something, I guess. Okay. Um Right. Right now I'm just thinking, am I I mean catching anything is gonna be a bit, a bit of a challenge. What's have been four fish caught over the whole weekend from birch? So right now I'm just thinking getting anything on the clock is going to be a result. So I suppose we need to have a walk round, hopefully find a fish or two and get this challenge started. Let's go. Let's go. Half time, tuning out as usual in my mind's eye, watching this horizon as you float by, where's the sky stars across the sky? That carrier bag really ruins that image, doesn't it, really? I, don't, I think it makes it. Everyone's going to have a carrier bag with them, don't they? Really? Yeah. Maybe he's at the end of the session with your rubbish or... But then how do you get your carrier bag to there? Hidden, out of sight. It could be worse. It could have, like... A dump in it, which is what normally has at the end of the session on the way back when I haven't been able to make it to the toilet. <laughs> that could be the next thing, you know, how people were taking home their used tea bags to use on their next session. Were people doing that? I've seen people do it. <laughs> I've seen people do it just to make them look like they're having more brews than they are, to try and make them look more carpy, get to the lake, already got a pile, I haven't even had a brew, but they've got a big mountain of tea bags there. You know, it's skills, it is good skills. Whereas now, people are carrying around dumps from session to session. Nobody's doing that. To make it look like they've been there longer than they have. No, they're not. It'll happen, it'll happen. Just carry a bag full of <laughs> It'll happen. It won't. It will. It won't. It will. It will. All right. You mark my words, it'll happen. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start the trend. Ne next, time, next time we do a challenge, I'll just have a carry a bag. <laughs> Fall to the top. <laughs> oh, this session's got off to a bad start, hasn't it, already? Look where we're at. Look where we're at with this. It's your fault. Fresh air, tastes like I imagined and you still wear All these reservations, but I don't care All this carbonation bursting out Is that the shot? Well, make sure you get the shaft in as well. Don't just focus on its big bulbous tip. Get the, get the shaft in. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is the worst start. Oh, it's bad, isn't it? It is really bad. So I've had a good few laps of the lake now and spoken to a few of the anglers who fished last night um, as well as Chris, the, the fishery owner. And um, a lot of people have recommended I, I check out the old half of the lake. This lake is split into, into two sections. Um, there's been one fish caught from the old half and one guy lost a couple. Um, so I did focus a lot of my attentions over there but having been stood in, in this peg on the new half now for 10, 15 minutes, I've actually seen three fish show here. Now this area of the lake hasn't been fished now for a good few days. Um, all the anglers have been concentrating in, in, in the other, other section of water. And this lake, it, it isn't a big lake. It's about eight acres, but there's lots of islands. So actual water area isn't, isn't that large 
and these fish do react very quickly to any angling pressure. So it does stand to reason that the fish may have moved to escape the pressure and got into this quieter, uh, newer section of the water. And um, well, there's definitely some here because I've, I've seen three shows in, in a fairly short space of time. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm definitely going to do the day here in this peg. It's called the, the long chuck peg. Um, I'll definitely do the day here. And the good thing about this particular peg, it's kind of on a, on a spit between both sections of the lake. So I can keep a, a close eye on what's going on behind me in the old, old section of the lake. And from here as well, I've got a, a great view across this bit of water as well. So I should I need to move, it won't be any, any hardship at all. So yes, I'm going to uh, get the barrow unloaded, get some rods out and uh, get the clock ticking. Well, I'm ready to make the first cast and I think I'll make it there. <laughs> While we've been setting up, we have seen a few fish showing. All I've got here is just a simple bottom bait rig with a three bait mesh stringer. And I'm just going to cast that right where that fish has just shown. A little bit left, but I'm quite happy with that. Well, that's it. The first rod's gone out. The clock is now ticking. The time is 4 p.m. That's a bit precise. I bet it's not 4 p.m. Okay then, 3:57. If you want to be, <laughs> if you want yeah, to be, I do want to be. <laughs> okay, it's 3:57, and I've now got 48 hours to catch enough weight of carp to get myself home. Well, before I put the third and final rod in place, I thought I'd just quickly show you the rig and the setup that I'm using. I've got 23 pound Exocet Transkarki straight the way through to the, to the rig. Um, and here I've got one of the slick lead clips with the naked line tail rubber using a four ounce flat pair lead. The hook link, that's the 20 pound um, Cortex tungsten. That goes down to a size four short curve hook. Now until recently, I had always used the wide gate beaked hooks, but on one particular session, I ran out and all I had was the short curves and that session turned out to be an absolute blinder. Every fish I hooked was absolutely nailed, inch back, bottom lip, landed every fish I hooked. And ever since then, I've been totally sold on the short curves. For me, their sharpness is, it's stupid how sharp they are and I really can't see myself using anything anything other than these for, for all my bottom bait fishing. I've just got a shrink tube kicker there, it's quite a long length of uh, a shrink tube, basically to um, just increase the shank. Now I know a lot of people when they steam the shrink tube have it really aggressive like that but for me that just narrows the, the gape and I think can hinder the hooking properties of the rig. All I've done here is basically extend the shank for me personally, I think a long shank hook does offer better hooking properties. And you could say, well, why not use a long shank hook? Well, the longer the shank is, the weaker the hook is itself. So by increasing the shank with the, uh, the shrink tube, you have all the benefits of a long shank hook with the hooking properties, whilst retaining all the strength of a short shank hook. Just got a small piece of silicon there uh, down the shank just to trap the hair in place. And the hook bait is just a bottom bait Pacific tuna um, that I've been, uh, that's been pimped by soaking in the hot schwitzer liquid for at least two days prior to this session. And then all I've done, I've just tipped all the baits into a bucket here. Uh, they've now absorbed most of that liquid. And then I've added some crayfish meal to the baits. Um, the baits themselves are quite sticky, tacky to the touch. So they kind of form a crust when, the, when all the crayfish powder sticks to the baits, it kind of forms a nice crust and that really does maximise the attraction. 
Then all I'm doing after that is just simply nicking on a mesh PVA stringer, a mesh PVA bag. I've got three, three Pacific tuna boilies in there. Just wrapping it around the shank there to trap the silicon in place so that can't move when it, when it impacts on the water. And that's it, all ready to cast out. Well, not long after I got the rods out, I saw a couple of fish show in the peg just next door. So I quickly set up a spare uh, 10 foot rod, all rigged up, just in case the fish continued to show, which they did. And one of the fish I saw roll was a, was a, was a good fish. So I quickly reeled in the rods I was fishing with, popped next door, made one cast with a little stringer uh, to where I'd seen the, the fish roll. And uh, yeah, it all turned out quite well. Well, that decision to cast that single rod to where I saw them few fish show, I was going to say it's definitely paid off, but it hasn't gone in the net yet. <laughs> this rod's only been in the water about, about 15 minutes and we are playing the first fish of this challenge. That's, uh, this would be an amazing, an amazing start if it goes in the net. When the alarm sounds in here, it really does get the heart racing. There's so many big fish in here. It's not a big fish, but like I say, it doesn't really matter. Pretty sure it's in the tail or something. It's in the mouth. It's in the mouth, and I tell you what, it's an absolute, absolute hippopotamus chunk. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Right. Get in that net, oh yes! Oh, that is an absolute unit! That will do for starters. <laughs> That's crazy, That's crazy. Fishing just over an hour. Saw three fish roll in quick succession in the peg to my left. Quickly set up a, another rod in case the showed again, which one did. Cast out a little, uh, just a bottom bait with a, a small mesh bag of four pellets and a boilie. And it was in 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe. And we have got a chunk. Mileage, mileage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what an incredible start. What an incredible start. Fist bump. Thank you. Oh. I want to get it weighed because, uh, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a start. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. I wasn't bad angler on my behalf, actually. Well done, me. <laughs> That's a huge fish. Uh, right. I think Harry and I are both going with a guess of about 37 pound. Yeah. Not too bad. 37 pound, six ounces. 
What an absolutely amazing start. I really was not expecting that. Not at all. I'm a little bit lost for words, to be honest. This challenge really couldn't have got off to, to any better start. Less than two hours on the clock and we've got over 37 pounds on the clock. <laughs> this is, uh, well, this is the biggest carp I've caught this year. It's the biggest carp I've caught during the challenges, not including the, the special challenges. And yeah, I'm absolutely blown away. What an awesome looking fish it is as well. Incredible looking common. Oh yes. <laughs> I don't really care what happens now to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. I really am. Oh yes, so if nothing else happens, I'm happy with that really. A bit boring for everyone else watching, but I'm happy with that. Did you have a celebratory brew? Definitely, I was thinking exactly that. Going into the first night, there was still a lot of fish in the peg that I'd started off in. So my plan really was to just continue with the, with the stringer approach. Um, the fish were already in the area. I didn't feel the need to introduce any bait to, to attract them there or hold them there. They obviously wanted to be there. And I was confident really that, that something would happen. So, okay, so let's just chat about things now. 117.8 miles to get home. Point nine, you think it is? No, it was 117.8 until you made me reverse back out, go down the track, and then film me coming back in with the drone, which was unnecessary, and it put unnecessary miles <laughs> on the top of it. So, uh, really... Yeah, but the only evidence that we have is of you doing 117.9. We're arguing over point one of a mile. Hey, I've lost a challenge by an ounce before, after you diddled me. So, 117.8. I mean, I could now do 37 miles to another venue. I don't know of any venues within 37 miles on the way home, to be honest. I know quite a few venues, 50, 60 miles from here on my way home. There's a few. There's venues that are within 37 miles though. Not ones that I know, not ones that I've fished, not ones I'd want to take a gamble on. There's waters within like 50, 60 miles of here, which I think will have a really good chance of putting a few fish together in a short space of time. So that's what I want to do now. I want to try and get to, say 65 miles. So another one of them, thir another 30, and then I'll be... <laughs> So if I can put another 30 pound together by the morning, that'd be good. Yeah, that would be good. So really we're looking at another two fish, which is by no means a given. Getting two fish by tomorrow morning is by no means a given. I know I might have had a fish early, but there's nothing to say that could, that could be it. It really could. Like I said, these fish are so quick to move on pressure.
off you big lanky <laughs> horrible things oh, I really hate them with a the passion really? yeah I do they're like literally slugs daddy long legs is. that's it I hate them no they piss me right off why why just the way there's no just the noise they make the noise they make yeah like the noise they make is, it just aggravates me I find them irritating beyond belief they're t I hate them. And also pointless. Is that noise? They're literally not making a noise. They are. Since when have daddy long legs is been a problem? I think it's just when they get you in your face. That's that's what it is. That's but what they, But what do you mean they get you? What do they even get? They, they fly in your face. No, they do. Oh god off my first. Oh I hate them. Hate flames. Into the flames you go. Get in the flame. Get in the flames. Get in the flame. Ah, oh, got ya! <laughs> Slugs freak me out. Daddy long legs is just aggravate me. There's a difference. I'm not scared of them. Oh, oh. These mosquitoes are quiet. They go about the business quietly. Well, apart from when they buzz right in your ear. The missus is aware. Whenever we get one flying in the room, I. I lose my shit. I, I properly lose it. She just goes up to them really calmly and picks them up. I'm like, no, pull his legs off. Just... <laughs> it's just, it's just a really poor design. What do you mean? Well, just look at them. It's like. It sounds like the aviation at its finest, it's sort of just... <laughs> like that, aren't they? Bumbling along. <laughs> I think the smell of all these charred Daddy Longlegs corpses under my brolias has put the mates off from joining in. Well, it's about half past nine at night. It's been dark for just over an hour now. And uh, I've, I've had no more, no more action, which to be honest, doesn't really come as a great surprise. Um, but I do still feel like I'm, I'm ahead of myself, really. I think I've got a little bit of room to play with. And uh, going into this challenge, if, if someone told me that I'd be uh, on £37 going into the first night, I'd have taken that all day long. Get off my face! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I just hate them so much. I hate them so much. <laughs> so, as I was saying before, I was viciously attacked. I do feel like I'm in quite a good position going into the first night of this challenge. Um, but I have made a plan, and the plan is at the halfway stage of the challenge, I would like to be halfway home. Um, now York is roughly halfway between here in, in Lincoln, uh, well, Market Raisin, and my home in Middlesbrough. And I do know quite a lot of venues in the York area, ones that I'd be confident of going to and confident of putting a few fish on the bank. So that's where I would like to be. And that involves a drive of around 60 to 65 miles. Um, so I'm gonna to need to catch 23, 24 pound to get me there, which could be one more bite. There's, there's so many fish of that size in here. So it, it's certainly very achievable, um, but, you know, if the worst comes to worse and by 4 p.m. tomorrow, I'm no farther along, I've, I've caught no more fish, then <sighs> I really don't know what to do, to be honest. I guess I'll just have to have a, a serious rethink and cross that bridge if it comes to it. I 
know what I'm going to do? As a treat. I'm going to move the stove between my legs. It's getting to that time of year where that is a pleasure. <laughs> that is an absolute luxury. <laughs> if I trap my legs together, I get even more. Jeez. Oh, you know when you f***ed off last night and the, and the daddy long legs were being f***ers? Should have seen what came in the bivvy after it. A hornet. What? A hornet. About that long. Nah. It did. I threw your box of rice at it. <laughs> Mid air. Where is my box of rice? Uh, it's over in your bivvy. But it was attracted by my life, so it kept dive bombing. It was massive. An actual hornet. It must have been that. I thought it was a bit late for home. Exactly. We all know they go to bed at eight o'clock. This was well <laughs> after that. <laughs> so the next morning when I woke up and nothing had happened, initially I didn't really have any concerns. Um, I would have been more hopeful than I was confident of catching during the night. I would, would have been a lot more confident of a, of a daylight bite, be it either first thing in the morning or, or as the day wore on. But as we moved into the, into the morning towards the afternoon, it was clear that there just weren't the number of fish present in the swim that there had been the previous evening. And then a few concerns did start to creep into my mind. Well, I'm having a very slight change of tactics. Um, so far the session I've just been using Pacific Tuna bottom baits, boosted in that hot schwitzo liquid and then soaked in that uh, krill fish meal. Uh, and obviously it's worked, um, but the, the clock is ticking now, there isn't long left and I want to try and get a, a really quick bite. If I can find some fish feeding, I want to put a bait to them, that's going to go quickly even though the fish I caught came within 10 minutes. <laughs> I still want to stack the odds even more in my favour. So um, what I'm doing here, I'm just rolling some balls of uh, Pacific tuna paste, which I'm then rolling in the krill fish meal powder, um, and then putting the paste in an armour mesh to prevent it from uh, breaking down completely and. Uh, making it more impervious to the attentions of any any small fish that may be out there. Um, and the advantage of doing uh, using paste rather than a boily is because it hasn't got a tough outer skin, all the flavours, attractors, food signals just flood out, giving you massive amounts of, of instant attraction. Uh, and even more so when it's um, when it's rolled in that krill fish meal. And to uh, increase the attraction even further, I'll just put them. I'll, I'll tie up a few. A few little balls of paste already and put them in a in a pot of the uh, hot chorizo liquid so that's my my next tactical change and i'm hoping it's going to pay off <laughs> uh... well it's mid-morning and it's just not happening I've not really seen any activity in the swim at all. I haven't been getting any, any liners. Not seen any signs of any feeding fish. Um, and the clock is ticking, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to have a, a walk around with a, with a single rod and a net and a, and a bucket of bait and bits and bobs and, and just try and find, find something. It's a sorry sequence of events, amen You only see what I want you to, baby Pretty woman, but I'm back to get crazy This is going exactly how I thought it would go I think you thought it was going to be a doddle when I had that fish really quick I knew it wouldn't be the case And really, as long as we get to the next venue before it's dark and I've got the rods all set Really, that, that's, that's a worst case situation As long as I get to the next venue 
in time to get the rods in before it gets dark then that won't be too bad but something has to happen really in the next three hours it means fish fizzing right on me now right on me well, unfortunately, I am going to have to call it time here at Old Mill. It's really frustrating because my carp angling head wants to stay here. There's just always that chance of catching that, that really big fish, um, oh, as, as we've seen already. Um, and I do think that if I was to stay for another couple of hours, that another chance would present itself. But it's just too much of a risk. I need to be on the road. I need to be heading north towards home. And I'm sure there are plenty of waters within 37 and a bit mile north of here where I could go and, and, and catch a, a few fish, but none that I'm familiar with. But... I have been told about a venue very close to here, within a few miles, that I'm told will give me a very, very good chance of catching a few fish in a short space of time, getting some weight together and getting some miles on the clock. So I want to get these rods reeled in, get the van loaded up and head off over to there now. Right, let's go. So when we arrived at the next venue, we were greeted by a very overgrown and neglected farm reservoir that very clearly and very luckily had a lot of carp in it. So I've just been watching fish just working their way down this, this margin here. So just put a couple of handfuls of pellets to the left and to the right. I'm just going to lower the exact same rig that I've been using over on, uh, on Birch Lake. Just lowering that in place. And it goes. Let's see what happens. So although this was a farm reservoir, judging by just how overgrown it was, it didn't even look like the banks had been trodden on. And all we really knew about the place was that some carp have been stocked some years previous and then just been left. There we are. He's angry. That took longer than I was expecting actually. There's so many fish here I expected it to go straight away. Quite a nice, nice solid little fish anyway. Yes. He's not massive, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It's miles on the clock. It's definitely fives, that one. Proper little chunk. Yeah, okay, all right, I'll give you five. Thank you. Just, only because he's so fat. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's another five miles. Another five miles on the clock. What do we need? Another, another five of them. Another four of them. And yeah. uh, I can get. Oh, he's got his fins all flared out. Get yeah. to where you need to go. Another four of them. Yeah, and get to the next venue. But on another plus side, I've now caught from two of the three venues that I need to catch from as well. I was quite surprised to find that all the other fish just drifted out the area. They had been feeding really, really confidently, but all that disturbance from that, that one fish and they went. So we had to go uh, elsewhere and try and find them again.
not going to lie, the fact that Mark found that reservoir that he didn't even know about before he got down there and for it to have you know a decent head of fishing that that were very willing to feed was uh yeah it was a, was a stroke of luck perhaps a stroke of genius opting to go there with with very little information on them but uh yeah also probably a stroke of luck as well So this is the second bite in pretty quick succession. I'm trying to do me in the trees. He is as well. Oh, come off, he's a proper fat one again, look. Okay, not net. Yes. It is good fun. I'm enjoying it. It's all wide across the back as well. Well, there's been loads of fun over on this reservoir. Three fish now in fairly quick succession. Harry's going to give me six and a half for this one. Yeah. So that puts me now on 55 pounds, I think. So that means I need seven pounds to get me to my next destination. We are now behind schedule or it is, uh, it's nearly five o'clock. So I'm going to hit all the rush hour traffic. Um, and now it's it's going to mean it's going to be touch and go to whether I get there before it gets dark. Still need to catch another one though. And I still need to catch another one, yes. <laughs> I reckon it's the biggest one yet. Keeping deep, it's keeping deep. Sign of a big one. Yeah. <sighs> well, that is without a doubt the biggest one I have caught from this uh, this reservoir so far. What are you going to give me for that one, Harry? Uh, well, eight pound. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, it's definitely yeah. It's way bigger than than the others. Um, but I wouldn't say it's any bigger than eight, so. Okay. I mean, it is a, like I, like I say, they are like balls of lead. They are like breeze blocks. Right, so that puts us on, um, what we've done before, 55, 63 pound. 63 pound. I think. Someone yeah. will correct us if we're wrong. I'm yeah. sure it's about that. <laughs> but, and that's enough to get you on. That is enough to get me to Pearl Bridge Farm, in York, which is the final venue I've chosen to put the rest of the miles on the clock. It's a venue I've fished quite a few times in the past. It can be very prolific and I'm hoping it's going to be very prolific for me. So here we are at Pearl Bridge Farm, Q Lake, just outside York, which since leaving Alderman Lakes, then going to the reservoir, means I have clocked up 61 miles. So it's actually a couple of miles less than I was expecting. Um, just trying to work it out in my head what, what, that, what that means. Um, I think I now need to catch around 55 pounds of fish. Thereabouts, Harry, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I need to catch about 55 pound of fish and I've got um, 18 hours, I think, 18 hours to do it. So it's very, very doable. Um, it'll be even more doable if I can get some rods in the water tonight. So uh, yeah, let's get cracking, let's get down to the lake. So when we arrived at Pool Beach Farm, it was dusk um, and my plan going into the night was to bait an area 
and just fish two rods on that. Now luckily I always carry several jars of hemp and tins of corn and pellets and things like that uh, in the back of the van so I was able to put together a nice spod mix. So I baited a, a tight area, put two rods on it and I was pretty confident of something happening through the night. You know what I'm big into at the minute? Mocha. Do you, is that like a bought mocha or do you make your own? Oh, I make them. Yeah? Yeah, by mixing hot chocolate and coffee. So it's not really that clever, but yeah, I make them. That's, that... where, that's where I'm at these days. Yeah. We're, get, we're getting into winter, kind of. Autumn. I mean, yeah. It's autumn. It's felt autumnal today. Anyway, so yeah, the mocha situation is we're going into autumn. It's not quite hot chocolate weather, not quite coffee weather. It's a, uh, you know? What's coffee weather? I would say coffee weather. <laughs> I associate coffee <laughs> with late summer's evenings um, with a cafetiere, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know, whatever. But hot chocolate's definitely winter. There's no arguing there, is there? So what are we having now? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that was, for a decaf coffee, that's quite tasty. Mm, probably one of the best. You don't have tea anymore. Giving up on it. Decaf tea's just shit. Not to the point, it's horrible. I mean you did give it a go for I give it time. a damn good go. You can't no one can no one can say I'm a quitter. I give it a damn good go. I tried every blend there was more than once. Even if I didn't like it, I persevered. <laughs> but no, in the end, it just wasn't worth it. Not as carpy though, is it coffee? Something about walking into a swim and just seeing tea bags just scattered all around the swim and the stench of piss where someone's literally <laughs> drank that much tea. The, the bladder can't handle it. Like that peg up there? Yeah. <laughs> I mean that peg up there, it reeks of piss. You think, you legend. <laughs> you've, you've drank some serious tea. found a penny on the floor, so I'm going to try and pay the pond. Oh, it was a good flick as well. Penny. Literally one penny. That's what I found on the floor. Had I found more, I would have given more. You can't just... That's all you had to give? No, 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 it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work that way. You don't just throw money in the pond. Had I have found... You have to... It, it's... Find a penny, pick it up, throw it in the pond, you'll have good luck. You can't just open your wallet and think, ah, oh, I'm a bit desperate today, and just start shotting money in. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, you have to find it. I've seen plenty of people give, like, get their wallet out. Yeah, it, does, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. No. It, it's not how it works. See, they're paying out of, out of desperation, isn't it? To try is, that, is that not what you are at the moment? No, 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 it's not, no, not at all. They're paying out of desperation, wanting something back. By merely giving a donation, say, I could have put that in my wallet, that penny. But I thought, no, you know what? Pay the pond. That's where it belongs. They're going, oh, 
you know, they're desperate, just <laughs> shot in money and wanting something back. I didn't want anything back. I'm merely paying the pond. There's a difference you're there. Not, you're not paying the pond, you're just passing on money to the pond from whoever was here before. Well, exactly, yeah, it's not mine. It's not mine to keep, is it? It's not mine to keep, so well, I'm no, giving it, it back. Is it not yours to find the owner of that penny, who's now penniless? <laughs> Quite literally, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Would that get me any sort of carpy karma? I suppose Probably. it could do. It could do. It'd have to be... If you found a fiver on the, on the bank, mm. would you chuck that in or would you put that in, the, in your wallet? I think I'd chuck it in. No, you wouldn't. I'd put it in the spot and <laughs> spot it out. There's no way you would chuck it what, in. What are you that trying to say? Straight in your wallet. You know what I'd probably do? I'd probably... <laughs> uh, me being me, I'd probably say, there you go, Harry, go buy yourself some sweets or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd do. The following morning, my confidence was given a bit of a kick in uh, when nothing happens and things didn't really look like they were going to change. Um, so it was clear if anything was going to change, it was going to have to be my tactics. So having seen very few fish showing in the open water, um, decided to go and have a walk around on the far margin where it's, it's very weedy. and there were a number of fish held up in that weed. So my next line of attack was to cast over onto that far bank, walk around, attach a rig, drop it in a solid PVA bag, and then place that by hand in one of these little holes in the weed where the carp was sitting. Well, we're in. It's a bit hit and hold to get it out of that weed. Weed on that far bank. It's so thick, so tough. But I think now we are in the clear. You can't afford to give them fish a millimetre. And that's it. He's, he's free, he's in open water now. A bit of weed just in this margin. It is a decent fish. It's not a bad fish at all. It's done me in the weed. No! Oh, never. There's someone else's rig. It's obviously, been, they've obviously been snapped off in the weed just down here. And the fish momentarily just got tethered on someone else's line. So he couldn't, he was on the surface, but he wasn't moving at all. I don't want him going there again. You'll do. You will do nicely. Come on. Get in that net. Get in that net. No, no. Yes. Get in. Ah, oh, yes. Don't believe how relieved I am right now. It's been really hard work here, much harder than I was expecting. Um, but then PVA bags have only been over on that far margin for, for an hour. So hopefully, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the turning point now. Now I've got the tactic right. Hopefully that's, that's it. This isn't a bad fish, it's probably it's a high double. So yeah, that's that's a nice bit of weight. But I'm gonna get my handle mucky. Oh yes, get in there, you beauty. If he escapes, are you gonna give me weight for it? <laughs> that's Oh look at that. That's how it's done. That's carpy, isn't it? What's that achieving? Dunno, everyone's doing it these days. <laughs> Aren't they really? <laughs> he was quite happy with the landing that just laid over the reeds, but everyone's at it. And it does make a carpy photo. I did actually do it on my Instagram page quite recently. Did you? I think I had um, the poles more, more elevated. The caption was, 
fly in the victory flag. <laughs> 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 yeah, he went down a treat. <laughs> Oh, this is a target fish. Yeah. Yeah. This one is uh, the black spot male. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, yeah another target fish ticked off the list. First time fishing the venue in probably three four years. Only got to nail the target. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's see what we got here. No way, that's bigger than I thought. Nineteen, fourteen, thirteen, nineteen, thirteen. Oh, you've, that's clumsy. That's just clumsy. Nineteen, thirteen. That is, I put it about seventeen, seventeen and a half. So that's a result. Yeah, nineteen, thirteen. Awesome. Right, so a proper look at him, eh? So that is a nice result. Cracking long lean mirror of just under 20 pound. And this bite came at a time when there were a few doubts creeping into my mind. I was beginning to think it wasn't going to happen. And I was contemplating my next move. I was thinking about going onto one of the other lakes on the complex on one of the uh, the easier lakes to try and build up a bit of weight and then this bite came out of the blue and that changed everything. However, although this is another 20 miles or so farther up the road, time is ticking away and I'm by no means in the driving seat. For whatever reason, that, that was the only, only bite I received on the solid bags. A few fish did start to cruise around in the upper layers on the edge of the weed. Managed to get them feeding on the surface, but they were never really feeding confidently enough to make them catchable. Well, there's now just over three and a half hours of the challenge remaining and I really can't afford to stay here any longer. I mean, don't forget I've got to get home as well and it takes me roughly an hour to get home. Uh, so I've got two and a half hours of fishing time. And yeah, that is plenty of time to get two bites if the average size is, is pretty much what I've, what I've caught. Um, but there's just as good a chance I could sit here and nothing happen at all. And I'm not prepared to take that risk. If I'm, if I'm gonna fail, then I wanna go down fighting. So what I've done, I've reeled the rods in and I've had a walk around a couple of other lakes that are on this complex. I'm quite lucky that there are several lakes here at Pearlbridge. Um, one of the lakes I like the look of is called the Cart Lake. I did find quite a few fish feeding there. Um, and the fish I saw looked to be low doubles. So I think I need around about 35 pound to make the journey back home. So yeah, I, I probably need, if the average size is low doubles, I need three fish, we've got two and a half hours. I have no idea how prolific that lake is, no idea at all. Um, but there's only one way to find out. So I'm gonna get all the stuff packed down. I don't even need to drive anywhere. I can just dump it in the van and walk, walk the few hundred yards over to the carp lake. That's exactly what I'm going to do now. Right, let's get a move on. You know what I don't get? These, these are like the real oddballs of carp fishing. Those people, that when they're packing the rods away, they put the tips like, like, like that way around. Absolute weirdos. Yeah. 
Scott Day does that. No! Yeah. He was like literally at my carp fishing idol as well. Yeah. No! You've shattered that dream. They say never meet your heroes and, and all that. And I met him. I thought it was incredible. And now, imagine, imagine meeting him and watching him unpack his rods from his rod bag and you're seeing that. I'd be like, I'd start crying. I'm glad we're in agreement on this though. It's like if you were to put your undies back in your undie drawer, you turn them inside out first. Isn't it? It's that sort of logic, isn't it? Nice thing on these out of the tumble dryer. Go up when you pant draw, turn them inside out. Why? It's exactly the same. So this is the carp lake, or part of it. It's um, as you go sort of round the corner, a bit like a like a horseshoe shape. Um, I have fished this lake once before, when it was just this little bit of water here in front of me, uh, when I was 12 years old. I didn't, I didn't even know it until I actually walked up to it. It was only when I walked up to it that I, I recognised it. I remember the barn and everything. And uh, yeah, I fished it when I was 12 years old. I blanked that time, <laughs> but uh, I've, I've baited a few spots. There's some fish feeding like mad just down here, proper sheeting up. I mean, I don't even know if, they're all carp. I've seen carp. Um, there could be tench, bream, I don't know. But um, there's fish feeding here. I have seen carp when I walked around earlier, so fingers crossed we can get one or four or whatever it is. <laughs> Harry? Harry? So, I'd only been on the carp lake for a matter of minutes. Um, Harry certainly wasn't expecting me to get a bite that quickly. He was off filming bushes or whatever it was he was doing. All right. And I received a double take. Ah. You're in. I've got one in the net and I'm playing one. I've been shouting you. Right. How was it? Well, Harry went off on a wander and he's missed all the action. Just had a double take, more or less. I had um, one rod ripped off while I was playing it. The other rod went. They're not big fish, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yes, that is <laughs> a double bubble. We're moving. So there we go, 10 minutes fishing. We've got two carp on the mat. Uh, they're not monsters by any means, but um, there was never any size stipulations for this challenge. Um, what are you going to give me for these anyway? What, 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 how many miles do you reckon I've got here? I reckon you've got a total of about 11. I reckon the, the bottom one's probably closer to six so I'm gonna give you 11 yeah I'll um, I'll go along with that so no I'm, I'm pretty happy with that we've got time that we've got about an, an hour and a bit before I've got to get on the road see so, yeah, I've got about two and a bit hours of the challenge remaining uh, and I need to be on the road yeah just over an hour if I'm to make it home uh, before four o'clock It's been about 15 minutes since the move and um, playing another fish. I just load in a PV bag of chopped up boily just underneath the tree just down to my right. And there he is. Oh, get in that net. So we've got another small common here of about Four pound, I'd say, Harry, what you're going to give me? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll take four that. pound. So um, that leaves me with, um, I think, 20 miles uh, to go. 
Um, it, it has been good fun, just having the rods on the deck and watching them rip off. It, it has been a lot of fun. Um, it'd be a lot more fun if it wasn't quite so tense. There is only 45 minutes of this challenge remaining. So I'm going to slip this little fella back, get the rods back out there and see if we can't catch a few more. definitely brings about a quicker bite. Oh, we'll have to land in it over there. What a div. It's a proper old amateur, isn't it? Head about. Oh, yes. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave you there. This rod that I balls up, I'm going to reposition. It's kicking off. It's kicking right off. It's got three golden grains on the hair. Just making a bag on. What, 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 what do I need now? 12 pounds? This is it. Okay. Well, I was just about to show you this fish. Is that one still on? Oh. Let's just do it quick. It's been, I've been done. Oh. Well, Harry's awarded me nine pound for this one. Um, the rod that I have just recast with corn while this fish was in the net has already gone and um, I've been done. I've been done on that rod. <laughs> but um, there's only 11 pounds left to get. And then I can get on the road. I've got half an hour before I really do need to be setting off. So this is looking very achievable. I'm gonna slip this fella back, get that rod baited with corn, get it back out there. I, I can see the finishing line in sight. I was down here now. Oh, this would be awesome. It doesn't really matter how big it is. It's not, it's not that little, actually. Oh. The uh, pub pole. It's okay, that bite actually came within a minute of casting back out. So yeah, we've got just under half an hour. All right, more corn, get it back out there. Well, had I have landed that previous fish, I think this would have been a really cool carp to have ended on. What are you going to award me for that one? I'm giving you eight. Yeah, I reckon, uh, I reckon it's about there. Really pretty fish. There's 15 minutes remaining. I can do it, I can do it. <laughs> I reckon I need to be on the road in 10 minutes. <sighs> this fish just needs to go in the net. That's it. I think I was uh, three pound, four pounds short, something like that. It's bigger than that, I've seen it. So he just wants to go in the net. Quick look at him, <laughs> we need to go. Oh, come off, oh, come off, oh, come off. Get in that. Oh. Coming in, branch and all. Come on. Get in. Loves that branch, doesn't it? This one's going mental. Come on. There he is. Get in. Yes! Right. <laughs> Have a look at him. Quick look at him as well. So we've got a ghost common of about. Eight pound doesn't really matter. It's certainly bigger than three pound, which is what I needed to get home. And that is it. I can get home now. So I need to get packed away, get the van loaded and get on the road. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Packing up took me 
way too long there. Um, uh, I'm rushing that way, I can't get the keys in. Um, I'm going to be really up against it now to get back home. It's, it's an hour's drive, I'm going to hit a lot of the, the school traffic. I just hope I can make it back before 3.57. Right, go Harry, I'm leaving you here. I'll uh, speak to you soon. Have you shut that door? <laughs> See ya. sound very cheery but you also sound like you're driving so I'm assuming you've just popped out to the shops or something like that. Oh yes, yes, yes. We're yes, off to get a celebratory box of tea or something, I don't know. You're not, are you? Uh, you? You haven't made it. I haven't made it. I haven't made it. Uh, what is more frustrating is how close I am from home right now. <laughs> Where are you? I am literally on the phone. Right. Oh dear. Traffic's been bad. It's starting right here, and uh, just, uh, I don't know, traffic's just been bad. And yeah. not a bit. You knew it was going to be tight. You literally had to have a clear run, didn't you? I've just been thinking, but if I had to lock that for a second for that fish, you know, that, that, that's how bad it is. If I had to lock that fish, Right at the end, I'd have been on my way five minutes earlier that I'd probably been unlocking, unlocking my front door, you right? <laughs> well, nice it been. Sh shoulda, woulda, coulda, I'm afraid. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. You have failed. Come out big style. The thing is, I haven't done what's annoying. I was bad, big style, but to get this close, never mind, it's nothing I can do. Absolutely got this, but yeah. whatever. I'll, I'll give you a ring when I'm home, and then you'll see just how, how close the home I am. Alright, okay. Alright, All right. speak to you then. Bye. Bye. Well, I'm home, but unfortunately, I'm not home. Soon enough, I always knew this one was going to be going to be tight. But um, not quite this tight. <laughs> and that's, that's how close it was. I needed that journey home to go really, really smoothly. But uh, it's. Hi. Hello. You alright, you too? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you alright? <laughs> I, um, I needed the journey home to go really smoothly. It started chucking it down about halfway home, loads of spray on the road, traffic was slow. Um, not that I'm making excuses, I should have just caught more fish, shouldn't I, I suppose? So I guess all that's left for me to say is I'm absolutely gutted, but it's challenge failed. What? Didn't you pass? Didn't you pass? Don't you two start. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> you alright? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Having watched the great rod race in the past with Matt Hayes and the other fella. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't remember his name. Are you serious? Are you just, serious? I, Nick Brown, that's it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, that's terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> I genuinely couldn't remember his name. <laughs> uh, sorry. How, that's sorry, like I know. I have to, like, royalty. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha